हेलो एवरीवन होप यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट वी आर बैक अगेन विद हिस्ट्री मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री चैप्टर नंबर फाइव सोशल एंड कल्चरल अवेकनिंग इन द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी दिस इज एन ऑडियो बुक फॉर द हिस्ट्री बुक सो रीड अलॉन्ग फ्रॉम हियर इमेंस इंटेलेक्चुअल एंड कल्चरल स्टरिंग्स स्टरिंग्स कैरेक्टराइज नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंडिया The impact of modern western culture and consciousness of defeat by a foreign power gave birth to a new awakening. There was an awareness that a vast country like India has been colonized by a handful of foreigners because of internal weaknesses of the Indian social structure and culture. Thoughtful Indians began to look for strength and weaknesses of their society and for ways to of means of removing the weaknesses. While a large number of Indians refused to come to terms with the West and still put their faith in traditional Indian ideas and institutions, others gradually came to hold that elements of modern Western thought had to be imbibed for the regeneration of their society. They were impressed in the particular by modern science and the doctrines of reason and humanism. While differing on the nature and extent of reforms, nearly all 19th century intellectuals shared the conviction that social and religious reform was urgently needed. Ram Mohan Roy The central figure in this awakening was Ram Mohan Roy, who is rightly regarded as the first great leader of the modern India. Ram Mohan Roy was moved by deep love for his people and country and worked hard all his life for their social, religious and intellectual and political regeneration. his he he was pained by the stagnation and the corruption of the contemporary indian society which was at that time dominated by caste and convention popular religion was full of superstitions and was exploited by ignorant and corrupt priests the upper classes were selfish and often sacrificed social interest to their own narrow interest ramon roy possessed great love and respect for the traditional philosophic sy- sy- systems of the east but at the same time he believed that the modern culture alone would help regenerate indian society in particular he wanted his countrymen to accept the rational and the scientific approach that and the principle of human dignity and social equality of all men and women he also wanted the introduction of modern capitalism and industry in the country ramon roy represented a synthesis of the thought of the east and the west he was a scholar who knew over a dozen languages including sanskrit persian Arabic, English, French, Latin, Greek and Hebrew. As a young man he had studied Sanskrit literature and Hindu philosophy at Varanasi and the Quran and Persian and Arabic literature at Patna. He was also well acquainted with Jainism and other religious movements and the sects of India. Later he made an intensive study of the western thought and culture. To study the Bible in the original he learned the Greek and Hebrew. In 1809 he wrote in Persian his famous work Gift to Monotheists. Monotheists in which he put put forward the weighty arguments against the belief in many gods and for the worship of a single god. He settled in Calcutta in 1814 and soon attracted a band of young men with whose cooperation he started the Atmiya Sabha. From now on he carried on a persistent struggle against the religious and social evils which were widely prevalent among the Hindus in Bengal. In particular he vigorously opposed the worship of idols the rigidity of caste and the prevalence of the meaningless religious rituals he condemned the priestly class for encouraging these practices he held all that principle ancient texts of the hindu priest monotheism or worship of one god he published the bengali translation of the vedas of five of the principal upanishads to prove his point he also wrote a series of tracts and pamphlets in defense of monotheism while citing ancient authority for his philosophical views ram mohan roy relied ultimately on the power of human reason which was in his view the final touchstone of the truth of any doctrine eastern or western He believed that the philosophy of Vedanta was based on the principle of reason. In any case, one should not hesitate to depart from the holy books, scriptures, inherited and inherited traditions if human reason so dictates and if such traditions are proving harmful to the society. But Ramon Roy did not confine his application of the rational approach to Indian religions and traditions alone. 
in his in this he disappointed his many missionary friends had hoped that his rational critique of hinduism would lead him to embrace christianity ramon roy insisted on applying rationalism to christianity too particularly to the elements of blind faith in it in 1820 he published the percepts of jesus in which he tried to separate the moral and philosophic message of the new testament which he praised from its miracle stories he wanted the high moral message of christ to be incorporated in hinduism this earned for him the hostility of the missionaries thus as far as ram mohan was concerned there was to be no blind resilience on india's own past or blind aping aping of the west on the other hand he got forward the idea of new india guided by reason should acquire and treasure all that was best in the that was best in the east and the west thus he wanted india to learn from the west but this learning was to be an intellectual and creative process through which indian culture and thought were to be reno- renovated it was not to be an imposition of the western culture on india he therefore stood for the reform of hinduism and opposed the supersession by christianity he vigorously defended hindu religion and philosophy from the ignorant attacks of the missionaries at the same time he adopted an extremely friendly attitude towards other religions he believed that basically all religions preach a common message and that their followers are all brothers under the skin all his life ramon roy paid heavily for his daring religious outlook the orthodox condemned him for criticizing idolatry idolatry and for his philosophical admiration for christianity and islam they organized social boycott against him in which even his mother joined he was branded a heretic and an outcast in 1823 he founded a new religion society the brahm sabha later known as the brahmo samaj whose purpose was to purify hinduism and to preach monotheism or believe in one god the new society was based on the twin pillars of reason the vedas and the upanishads it was also to incorporate the teachings of other religions the brahmo samaj laid emphasis on human dignity opposed idolatry and criticized the social evils uh, like the pres- with the practice of sati ramon roy was a great thinker he was also a man of action there was hardly any aspect of nation building which he left untouched in fact just as he began to reform the hindu religion from within he also laid the foundations of the reform of the indian society the best example of his lifelong crusade against social evil was the historic agitation organized against the inhuman custom of women becoming sati beginning in 1818 he set out to rouse public opinion on the question on one hand he showed by citing the authority of the oldest sacred books that the hindu religion at its best was opposed to the practice on the other he appealed to the reason reason and humanity and compassion of the people he visited the burning ghats at calcutta to try to persuade the relatives of the widows to give up their plan of self immolation he organized groups of like minded people to keep a strict check on such performances and to prevent any attempt to force the widows to become sati when the orthodox hindus petitioned to the parliament to withhold its approval of benedict's action of banning the right of sati he organized a counter petition of enlightened hindus in favor of benedict's action he was a stout champion of women's rights he condemned the subjugation of women and opposed the prevailing ideas that women were inferior to men in intellect or in moral sense he attacked the polygamy and degraded state to which widows were often reduced to raise the status of women he demanded that they given the right of inheritance and property Ramon Roy was one of the earliest pro- propagators of modern education which he looked as a major instrument for spread of modern ideas in the country. In 1817, David Hare who had come out to India in 1800s as a watchmaker but who had spent his entire life in the promotion of modern education in the country founded the famous Hindu college. Ramon Roy gave most enthusiastic assistance to Hare in this. And his other educational projects 
In addition, he maintained at his own cost an English school in Calcutta from 1817 in which among other subjects mechanics and philosophy of Voltaire were taught. In 1825 he established the Vedanta College in which courses of both Indian learning and western social physical sciences were offered. Ramon Roy Ramon Roy was equally keen on making Bengali the vehicle of intellectual intercourse in Bengal. He compiled Bengali grammar through his translation pamphlets and journals he helped evolve a modern and elegant prose style for that language. Ramon rep- represented the first glimmerings of the rise of the national consciousness in India. The vision of an independent and resurgent India guided his thoughts and actions. He believed that by trying to weed out corrupt elements from Indian religion and society and by preaching the Vedantic message of worship of one God, he was laying the foundations for the unity of Indian society which was divided and divided into divergent groups. In particular, he opposed the rigidities of the caste system which he declared has been source of want of unity amongst us. Which he declared has been a source of want of unity amongst us. He believed that the caste system was doubly evil. It created inequality and it divided people and deprived them of patriotic feeling. Thus, according to him, one of the aims of religion reforms was political upliftment. Ramon Roy was a pioneer of Indian journalism. He brought out journals in Bengali, Persian, Hindi, English to spread the scientific literary, to spread scientific literally and political knowledge among the people, to educate public opinion on topics of current interest and to represent popular demands and grievances before the government. He was also an initiator of public agitation on political questions in the country. He condemned the oppressive practices of Bengal zamindars, which had reduced the peasants to a miserable condition. He demanded that the maximum rents paid by the actual cultivators of land should be permanently fixed, so that they too would enjoy benefits of the permanent settlement of nineteen of seventeen ninety three. He also protested against the attempts to impose taxes on their tax-free lands. He demanded the abolition abolition of the company's trading rights and the removal of heavy export duties on Indian goods. He also raised the demand for the Indianization of the superior services, separation of the executive and the judiciary, trial by jury and the judicial equality between Indians and Europeans. Ramon was the first believer of in internationalism and the free cooperation between nations. Poet Rabindranath Tagore has rightly remarked, Ramon was the only person in his time in the whole world of man to realize completely the significance of modern age. He knew that the ideal of, ideal of human civilization does not lie in isolation of independence but in the brotherhood of interdependence of individuals as well as nations of all spheres of thought and activity. This line is good. Isolation. Uh, that the ideal of human civilization does not lie in the isolation of independence but in the brotherhood of the interdependence. Ramon Roy took a keen interest in the international events and everywhere he supported the cause of liberty, democracy and nationalism and opposed injustice, oppression and tyranny in every form. The news of the failure of the revolution in Naples in 1821 made him so sad that he cancelled all his social engagements. On the other hand, he celebrated the success of revolution in Spanish America in 1823 by giving a public dinner. He condemned the miserable condition of Ireland under the oppressive regime of the absentee English landlordism. He publicly declared that he would emigrate from the British Empire if Parliament failed to pass the reform bill. Ramon was fearless as a lion. He did not hesitate to support a just cause. All his lives, he fought against the social injustice and inequality, even at the great personal loss and hardship. In his life of service to the society, he often clashed with his 
family with rich zamindars and powerful missionaries and with high officials and foreign authorities yet he never showed fear nor shrank from his chosen course ram mohan was the brightest star in the indian sky during the first half of the 19th century but he was not a lone star he had many dis- distinguished associates followers and successors in the field of education he was greatly helped by dutch watchmaker david heer and his scottish missionary alexander duff dwarker nath tagore was the foremost of his indian associates his other prominent followers were prasanna kumar tagore chandrashekhar deb and tarachand chakravarti the first secretary of brahma sabha next we come to the Derzio and Young Bengal A radical trend across arose among the Bengali intellectuals during the late 1820s and the 1830s This trend was more modern than even Ramon Roy's and was known as the Young Bengal movement Its leader and inspirer was young Anglo-Indian Henry Vivian Derio Derozio who was born in 1809 and was taught at Hindu College from 1826 to 1831 Derozio possessed an dazzling intellect and followed the most radical views of his time drawing his inspiration from the great french revolution he was brilliant teacher who in spite of his youth attached to himself a host of bright and adoring students he inspired these students to think rationally and freely to question all authority and to love liberty and equality and freedom to worship and to worship truth Derozio and his famous followers known as the Derozians and Young Bengal were fiery patriots. Derozio was perhaps the first nationalist poet of modern India. For example, he wrote in 1827, "My country in the days of glory past, a beauteous halo circled round thy brow, and worshipped as a deity thou wast. Where is that glory?" where that reverence now the eagle pinion has changed down at last and groveling in the lowly dust art thou the ministerial hath hath no wreath to weave for thee save the sad story of thy misery and one of his pupils kashi prakash ghosh wrote in 1861 land of gods and lofty name land of fear and beauty spell land of barge and mighty fame my native land forever farewell but woe me i never shall live to behold that day of thy triumph when firmly and bold thou shalt mount on the wings of an eagle on high to the reign of knowledge to the re- region of knowledge and blessed liberty derozio was removed from the hindu college in 1831 because his radicalism and died of cholera soon after at the young age of 22 the derozians attacked old and decadent customs rights and traditions they were passionate advocates of the women's rights and demanded education for them they did not however succeed in creating a movement because social conditions were not yet ripe for their ideas to flourish they did not take up peasants cause and there was no other class or group in indian society at that time at that time which could support their advanced ideas ideas moreover they forgot to maintain the links with the people in fact their radicalism was so bookish they failed to come to grip with the indian reality even so the derozians carried forward ramohan's traditions for of educating the people in social economic and political questions through newspapers pamphlets and public associations they carried on public agitation on public questions such as the revision of company's charter the freedom of press better treatment for indian labor in british colonies abroad trial by jury protection of rights from oppressive zamindars and employment of indians in higher grades of government services Surendra Nath Banerji the famous leader of the nationalist movement described the Derozians as the pioneers of the modern civilization of Bengal whose conscript fathers the conscript fathers of our race whose virtues will excite veneration and whose failings will be treated with gentlest consideration 
this was part 1 chapter 5 uh, please watch the next video for the part 2 for this chapter thank you everyone thank you for listening all the best